In this video, we're going to look at um, question 1G from outcome 1 worksheet 4, looking at the second derivative with implicit um, differentiation. And as a, a note, the answer to this question in the course notes is incorrect, so the correct answer we'll get to at the end of this video. So we begin this problem, like any implicit differentiation problem, with first of all finding the first derivative of each term in an expression with respect to x. So you might want to write e by dx of each term, so e by dx of y is equal to d by dx of sine y plus d by dx of x. So let's take each term and turn well, d by dx of y, we can't differentiate with respect to x, but we can differentiate with respect to y, and that is 1. But we need to compensate for the fact that we have differentiate with respect to y and replace this with dy by dx term here. Going across the other side of the equal sign, we have sine y, and again, we differentiate with respect to y and multiply by dy by dx, so we have the term cos y dy by dx. And then we have our final term, which is the differential of x, which handily is just 1. We can then take our terms together and tidy up. So we'll take the cos y dy by dx across, which gives us dy by dx minus cos y dy by dx is equal to 1. A common factor of dy by dx. Well, we have 1 minus cos y is equal to 1, and then we can divide through by that bracket. We get an answer for dy by dx is equal to 1 over 1 minus cos y. And of course, the question is not to find the first derivative, which we've done here, the question is to find the second derivative. And so we have a couple of points we can choose to um, take as the starting point for this second derivative. We could start from our final line of working here. After all, we have dy by dx on one side, and we'd have to use the quotient rule to take the derivative of the right-hand side. But we might find we prefer to have a term in which we use the product rule instead, which can be more easy to manage. So in fact, we're going to take this line of working here to be our starting point, finding the second derivative. So we'll just think of our working relatively tidy, and I'll write up at the top here first derivative, and over here we'll have second derivative. But I don't want to forget the thing I've worked out in the bottom here, which is an expression for dy by dx. I'm going to box this in, in red just now because we'll be coming back in using that as we usually do when we find the second derivative. But I'll start off in our second derivative column by writing out the expression I've underlined. The line of working I'm going to use as our starting point for finding the second derivative. So again, we can move across each term, taking d by dx, because we're finding the second derivative with respect to x. And Rather than just applying it, I'll write each one of these out. So we'll have d by dx of dy by dx minus d by dx of cos y dy by dx is equal to d by dx. So the first term and the term on the right hand side are going to be relatively straightforward to solve and then. We'll, we'll do that in short order. Um, d by dx, dy by dx, that's literally taking the second derivative of our taking derivative of our, of our first derivative. So that is always e squared y by dx squared. The thing we're actually looking for, but not quite there yet. This term in the middle, I want to take a look at that with the product rule in the second, because here we have the product of two terms, cos y and dy by dx, that we can deal with individually but not together. So we're using the product rule there. We'll come to that in a second. And over on the, the right-hand side, our equal sign, well, the derivative of any constant number is zero. 
But let's address the term here. We've got to have a look at it. I've underlined it in blue to highlight it. D by dx of cos y dy by dx. So I'm going to take a look at a side over here and have a look at this term. So we have cos y dy by dx. So we're going to use our product rule to find the derivative. So we can call u cos y and v dy by dx. And we take the derivative of both of these, so du by dx. Well, cos y um, derivative with respect to y is going to be minus sine y, but of course our derivative with respect to x, so we need to introduce this dy by dx term here as well. And for dv by dx, well, again, that's taking the derivative of dy by dx. So again, we get another d squared y by dx squared term here. So we've got our u and our v, our du by dx, and our dv by dx. So what is the thing we're looking for? d by dx of cos y dy by dx. Well, let's put in our product rule so we can Take u or v, do it in either order, but we'll start with u. So we've got u cos y times dv by dx, which is d squared y by dx squared. And then we add to that v, which is dy by dx. And we multiply that, careful with our signs here, I mean plus or minus sign, not sign trigonometry sign, and minus sign y dy by dx. So slightly more complicated term, but nothing we can't manage. So that's what's going to go in um, that space there. In fact, I probably need to make a little bit more room. So I'm going to move this equals zero over here just now and fit all this in. So what I've underlined in blue, that when we do the differentiation is what we get out. So I'm going to write all of that in. Um, and I put it in brackets. But remember, we've got minus sign before it. We want, we want to get any of our signs on, so I'll put it in brackets and go cos y d squared y by dx squared plus dy by dx minus sine y dy by dx. So this is often where things can get complicated in these types of implicit differentiation problems where we've got to bring in the product rule of the quotient rule. I'll close my bracket here, it's the second bracket. But we have now done all of our differentiation um, to get to this point. So let's now begin to tidy things up. I'll start off by taking everything out of the brackets. So we now have d squared y by dx squared. We have minus cos y by d squared y by dx squared. And um, we're going to have well, a minus times a plus times a minus. So we're going to have um, plus sine y dy by dx um, squared. And be careful with this, it is the whole thing squared, not d squared y by dx squared, which is the second derivative. So we've got something times itself, it's that term squared. So just be careful. Um, when, when we get to stage like this is where things can be complicated. But uh, overall, our whole expression is beginning to look a lot more manageable, equal to zero. So there's two things we can do in this line of working here. First of all, we can collect together our d squared y by dx. So we're going to do that for the first two terms. d squared y by dx squared is going to be 1 minus cos y, because those first two terms have that common factor. And then we're going to add sine y, and then we have an expression for dy by dx. That's why I made a point of circling the so squaring it in red, I should say. This over here as an expression for um, dy by dx. Um, so we can put this in. Remember, this is um, squared, so we're going to put it in our brackets like so. Now one, or one minus cos y. And that's all squared. And this, of course, all equal to zero. So now for the final stages and tidying up to solve the problem, but we want to keep our d squared y by dx squared on the left hand side. So we have that term there. And that's not changed. 1 minus cos 
y. And on the other side, we'll have minus sine y. And we still have this term in the square bracket. And now when we square a fraction, um, I should be a bit lazy here and just copy this line down because it's going to be the same. Next line. It's going to be equal. Ignore all of that stuff off to the left of it for something else. And all of this is going to be equal to minus sine y times, let's see over here, one over, because one squared is one, we can square the top, and the bottom is one minus cos y squared. Or to write that another way, minus sine y over one minus cos y squared. And again, I can be lazy with my left hand and use the whiteboard tool just to paste that in. So I've got that left hand side that's not changed. So we're nearly there. We're very close. Hopefully you can see to getting our final term. And then what we can notice is the bracket that's multiplied by our second derivative on the left hand side is the same as the bracket in the denominator on the right hand side. So if I divide both sides by one minus um, cos y, what we're left with is minus sine y over one minus cos y cubed. And that gives us our final answer to the problem. Now, of course, I mentioned at the start of this, you'll see in the course notes on Moodle, the answer to this question is given as minus sine y over one minus cos y squared. But I can assure you, this is in fact the correct answer. And the second derivative of, well, what was the second derivative of? y equals sine y plus x is d squared y by dx squared equals minus sine y over 1 minus cos y all cubed.